The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. It is good to greet those of you who are here in the sanctuary and to greet those who are joining us online, either watching the live stream or seeing this as a recorded service. I do want to offer a special word of welcome to visitors and guests who we have with us either here or online. If you are a visitor, we welcome you in Christ's name and we pray that you will experience God's love for you here this morning. For folks who are here in the sanctuary, I'm going to please ask you to double check your cell phones now. I, I know you already checked them before you came in, but it's taken out make sure that they are silenced for our worship service today. If you are watching online, you can go to rlcmilford.com connect to find a copy of the bulletin for this service that will help you follow along with our worship. At that same website, you can also find a digital copy of our daily devotional guide that you can download. If you're here in the sanctuary, you can either download it um, to use at home, or if you want to pick up a hard copy, we do have some in the table uh, on the table in the narthex. After this service, you are invited to stay for fellowship and Bible study down in the fellowship hall. We are continuing our series on um, reflecting on the Advent season and how observing Advent can affect and impact and deepen our faith through the whole year. Today we'll be looking at how Christ, who came long ago, still comes to us today to lead us into deeper faith and service. So I hope that you will join us for Bible study today. We've still got some mittens left on the mitten tree in the narthex. So these gifts are the ways that we help senior citizens in our community. And I think it's important to note that senior citizens are the ones that are often most overlooked during this season. So if you are able, please do check the mitten tree. And for those who, ha who are getting gifts already, we do thank you for that outreach. Our first Blue Christmas service, we've been talking about that. Um, first time we've ever done this. It's this Wednesday at 7.30, and there are more details about that in the bulletin. Also in the bulletin, you'll find information about a Christian service committee meeting um, after the 11 o'clock service today, um, a way to order poinsettias for Christmas Eve. You will also find our Christmas worship schedule, and that is we have the Christmas Eve schedule, also uh, Christmas Day and New Year's Day. We'll just be having one service on those two Sundays, so you can see that in the bulletin. Next Sunday, at 3 in the afternoon, we'll be gathering here to decorate the sanctuary for Christmas. We'll be putting up the Christmas tree, the greens, all those other things. This is just a really festive way to prepare for the coming of Christ. So I hope you will come and join us. It's always a very, just a delightful way to spend time with your church family. Do you want to remind you that the offering plate is in the narthex? If you are watching online or if you're here and prefer to give electronically, you can go to rlcmilford.com give and you'll find actually a variety of ways that you can give online there. Your investments of financial resources and of your time and of your service, you are empowering Reformation to do the work of Christ and we thank you for that. In our prayers this morning, I'm going to ask you to please lift up Emmett Vanette and his family. Emmett's here this morning. Please pray for them at the death of Emmett's sister, Claire. And we pray that the gospel promise of the resurrection and the presence of the Holy Spirit would comfort Emmett and all who grieve Claire's loss. One last announcement. The past two weeks, we have been lifting up the importance of our altar guild and how we need some people to help support that. We have had a few folks offer to be trained. We really do appreciate that. We could use a little more help though, so I'll just say, if you haven't found your way to serve yet at Reformation, this could be a behind the scenes way that you could help our church to continue having Holy Communion at every service. So if you're interested in helping out in that way, um, you can talk to Pastor Page or myself, and then after the first of the year, we will be getting those new folks trained up in doing that. And we do thank our Altar Guild folks and all the people who are doing so much work, either up front here or behind the scenes, to make our worship services possible. And with those announcements, we begin our worship with the prelude.
Please stand. We gather in the name of the God whose advent among us brings life and hope, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, come to us in grace to cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But God is rich in mercy, and his presence always brings forgiveness and healing. Let us therefore confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another, so that we may walk in hope and peace. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and in him God fulfills all his promises of forgiveness and restoration. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you, the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. Give us eyes to see your saving power at work, and give us the faith and love to follow you in the way of self-giving service for the sake of your kingdom. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I'll invite the children to come up for the children's meeting. Come on back down, guys. Hey, good morning. You guys can go over this way, yeah. Whoa, look at those sunglasses. Oh, that's cool. Good morning. Hi, how you guys doing today? Good. So we just lit three candles. How many candles are on the round part of that wreath there? There are three. How many? Take a look there on the round part. There's how many can you count? Do you see four on the wreath and then one in the middle? So each one is for one Sunday of Advent, one, two, three, four, and then that middle one will get lit on Christmas Eve. Each candle we light says we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. You excited about that? Yeah. Now, the reason we use candles to show that we're getting closer to Christmas is to say that as we get closer to Jesus being born, there's more and more light. Because Jesus is the light of the world. And see, yeah, you got to put those sunglasses on to deal with the light of the world. That's pretty bright. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the light of the world, and we get ready by saying, all right, it's getting brighter and brighter. Now, we did not plan this, but did you see how one of those candles had kind of a hard time getting lit? We call this technical difficulties, yes. So sometimes it can seem a little bit hard to see the light. And you're going to hear me read in just a few minutes from the Gospel of Matthew about John the Baptist. And John was a really big deal. He, he was the cousin of Jesus. So he's the cousin of the Lord of all. So if you're the cousin of the God of everything, you're a pretty big deal. And he had been telling people, Jesus is coming, the Savior is coming, and so, folks, let's get ready. Well, the king didn't like what John the Baptist was saying. And the king didn't like it because the king was doing some stuff he shouldn't do. And John the Baptist was telling him to stop. So you know what the king did? The king put John the Baptist in jail. So, whoop. <laughs> so John sends a message to Jesus. And he says, hey, Jesus, if you're the Savior, if you're the Lord of all, and if I'm the one that's supposed to be telling people about you, why am I stuck in jail? I don't like this very much. And Jesus sent a message back to John saying, don't be afraid. My kingdom is coming. My light is shining. He said, people are being healed. Blind people can see. People who can't walk can run and dance. I'm healing people. I'm forgiving people. I'm saving people. Don't you be afraid. So the message for us is, if we ever feel like it's dark, and it's hard to see the light. Maybe we're worried, or we're scared, or we're nervous about something, or just sad. Yeah. <laughs> if we have a hard time seeing the light, we can remember, even when it's hard to see, Jesus is the light, and he is always with you, he always loves you, and he will always be there for you, no matter what. So you can always count on Jesus. So I want you to remember that, 
because we're getting ready to celebrate his birth not too long from now. And until then, when things get dark, remember Jesus is your light. All right? Thank you for coming up. Thank you for listening so well and making me laugh. And <laughs> our service continues with the reading of the lessons. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalms 146 in unison. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bound down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. A reading from James. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? 
Jesus answered them, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Dear sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <sighs> I did something foolish. Now I know that's hard to believe. I, I knew better, but the opportunity was right there, and I did it. I read the comments. Uh, now, okay, there's someone who spent time on the internet. Because if you spend any time on the internet, you know, never read the comments. It was an opinion piece on a reputable news site, and it was just talking about how the writer and every family that they knew, they were all dealing with parents and kids and grandparents all getting sick every single day of this fall and winter. And it was just sort of an, ugh, this is so hard kind of column. Nothing earth shattering, no big deal. And then, I read the comments. Anger, blaming, ridiculing. This politician, that politician, this policy, that policy. Blame the parents, blame the teachers. Nobody's thinking about the kids. Nobody's thinking about the elders. You just want people to die. You want to control what everybody does for the rest of our lives. All reactivity, self-righteousness, and rage. <coughs> you ever experienced anything like that? Yes. Yeah. Online or in real life? Yes. Now this reminded me of a saying that I think is incredibly applicable to our moment. Hurt people hurt people. Amen. Uh-huh. People who are in pain tend to spread that pain to others. And I think our world right now has more than enough exhaustion, frustration, grief, and resentment, but we still seem intent on spreading it around. Sharing is not always caring. Now, I'm not bringing this up to be a downer but because I think our gospel reading today speaks powerfully and redemptively into exactly this kind of circumstance. John the Baptist is in prison because he spoke out against the king's immorality. Now, John's the one who was sent to prepare the way for Messiah. He is the cousin of Jesus, like I told the children, He's a big deal. But the Messiah has come, and John is rotting in jail. 
So he sends his disciples with a question for Jesus. Are you really the one? And there's a hint of maybe desperation, maybe complaint, maybe even criticism in that question. If you're the real deal, Jesus, why am I, your faithful servant, stuck here in prison? Can you relate? And I don't mean that in any self-pitying kind of way. Have you ever felt like life has just sent one too many trials and tribulations your way, and you want God, give me some relief? Aren't we all kind of there right now? Somebody, amen? amen. Thank you. you know it. This is Advent. We've had enough of the shadows. We want the light to shine. Every day. So here's where we have the hope and the challenge. How does Jesus respond? He reminds John of the messianic signs. He says, sin and death are being undone. People are being restored, healed, made whole. The kingdom is dawning. And no, it's not everywhere yet. But the healing, redeeming power of the Savior is at work in our world. Now, I know when we are in the midst of trials and temptations, it can be so easy to lose sight of that. So the Advent season reminds us by lifting up the promise, Christ's kingdom has dawned. Sins are being forgiven. Lives are being changed. Souls are being healed. Relationships mended. And Advent reminds us that power is there for you. Even when you feel stuck, even when we don't get the outcomes or the results we so desperately want, Jesus is still your Lord. He came into this world to set you free from sin and death, and you are eternally His. Now, in this fallen world, things will not always be as they should be. That was true for John in prison. And it will be true for us as well. But John wanted, or Jesus wanted John and us to know that his kingdom is advancing. And your true self, your very life, is secure in God's loving power. We will struggle. We will probably stumble. But Christ's kingdom will be victorious, and that victory is for you. Your destination, no matter how the path looks, is joy and peace and salvation. And now that brings us to the challenge. Remember before I said I think our society is caught up in a cycle of hurt people hurting people? Jesus is calling us to be the living antidote to all of that. But the road there is not easy. So Jesus says to John, Blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. What's that about? 
Well, see, in John's question to Jesus, there was an assumption. If your kingdom is here, Lord, then I shouldn't have to struggle. If the Messiah is come, why am I in jail? But you see, the way of Jesus is the way of the cross. The life of discipleship is a life of self-denial. Jesus does not detour us around or above our trials. He leads us victoriously into and through them. Because the Advent kingdom of Jesus does not remove struggling or even suffering. But what Jesus does is heal our hurt and transform our trials with his love and grace. When we stumble and fall, he uses our failures to teach us to rely more on his strength. And he will heal our pain, but he will do it in a way that grows understanding and wisdom in our souls. And he won't only sustain us through our trials, he will also use those trials to create perseverance and courage in our hearts. And the great danger for us is that we will take offense at this. That we will reject this way of the cross. Because honestly, it's not easy. But listen again to what Jesus says. John was the greatest human being at that point to have been born. He prepared the way for the Savior. But the very least in the kingdom is greater than John. He's talking about you. Do you see your high, glorious calling? John announced the kingdom. You are empowered to live it, to embody it, to share it. In our trials, despite our failures, by the mercy of Jesus, we can shine his light of hope and grace into every corner of this world. Jesus was born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. But he lives now in each one of you. And in his kingdom, healed people can heal people. Amen. Redeemed people can lead others to the Redeemer. Saved people can show others the reality of the Savior. So this Advent... I cannot promise you that Jesus will take us out of all of our hard places. But this is true. In the struggles, he will forgive us. He will heal us. He will give us his strength and love and wisdom. And then he will put you in that place. Not necessarily where you want to be, but precisely in the place where this world needs you to be. John 
was in chains in jail. But he pointed the world to the Savior. So do not be afraid of where Jesus will lead you. Just look around for what his love can do through you for a world that needs him. And blessed are we if we take no offense at this. Amen. Amen. Please stand. pray with confidence and hope for ourselves, the whole church, and all of creation. Heavenly Father, it is so easy for us to feel overwhelmed by the shadows of this world and to respond to pain with more pain. Give us hope and healing so that we may share light and love with others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, cleanse our hearts of all sin. 
fill us with confidence in your power and lead us beyond ourselves to offer all that we have and all that we are so that others may experience your saving presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, give us the courage to trust in your guidance and power. Send us into the world, not seeking our own blessing, but pursuing instead ways we can offer ourselves to the redeeming work of your kingdom for the sake of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, we see the struggles of homelessness, hunger, addiction, and loneliness in our community. Use us as instruments of your compassion. Guide our leaders to govern with wisdom and justice so that burdens may be lifted and all people may thrive. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of all the nations, you are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to our world, especially to the people of Ukraine. Give hope and protection to those protesting or facing persecution in China, Iran, and all elsewhere. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift before you those who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamas, Barbara Seth, David, Kathy Hubbard, Katie De Silva, Scott Wright, Pastor Eric Evers, Melinda, Jean Coherd, Janice Evans, Paul and Martha Oldland, Lillian Beebe, Christian, Mary, Rob Massey, Carol Warrington, Joyce Nauman, John Leach and family, Lisa Lazara, Maddie Cabana, Corey Subjinski, Kelsey Oldlin, Russell Cooley, Brandon Daniel, Rita Kopp, Ed Huey, Tommy Kay, the Lee family, Jeannie Phillips, the family of Claire Vinette, and those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you're watching the live stream or recorded service and others are with you, please share a sign of God's peace with them. Now for those of us here, please be mindful of keeping space between households as you share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let's be with you.
For those who are joining us online, we are going to bring the online part of our service to a close now. We are glad that you have joined us, and we are glad that you're part of our community of faith. And now we bless you to receive the mercy of the Savior, and let him set you free to serve his kingdom. Be at peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God.